Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Poor and I'd like to tell you about Atcore Systems' newest sugar serum developer tool, Sugar to Prod. We've developed this tool to fill a very specific need in sugar CRM development to assist in copying sugar CRM system data from a development environment to a production environment. Sugar stores most configuration changes in the file system, so using a repository tool like SVN or Git works really well in most situations. But in addition to the file system, Sugar CRM also stores system data in the database, so version control systems cannot help migrate the data from one system to the other. This data includes user and team data, reports, custom fields, workflows, and templates. To migrate this data, some developers write complex SQL scripts that are prone to mistakes, but most users end up making changes directly in production or entering them in development to test them and then re-entering them in production. Sugar to Prod solves this problem by giving you an intuitive graphical interface to compare system data in development and production environments and then migrating a subset or all of the data from one system to the other. Let's see how this would work. In this example, we're going to use a development environment to add a new field to the contacts module, place it in the edit and detail views, and then migrate the changes to the production environment. So to accomplish this, we would open up Studio, create the custom field, add it to the views, and then move the systems to production using an SVN client. Open Studio, our contacts module, and we're going to add fields. The first field here, nickname, type it in, and Sugar fills in the rest of the form. We'll save it. We will then quickly repeat the process for the spouse name field. So now the two custom fields are going to be available to the system, but they're not available to our users until we add them to the view. So let's go back up to the Customs module, click on Layouts, and we'll do the Detail view first. This is Let's go ahead and add a row to the bottom of the Detail view. add in our two custom fields and we can move the row back up toward the top actually here and we'll click on save and deploy let's do the same for the edit view we'll add it a new row the second position in the table add our two custom fields and we will save and deploy now let's test it let's go pull up a edit view for the contacts module like we're creating a new contact, we'll see our new fields are there available to the user. So now we need to move these changes that we've just applied in our development environment. We've tested them, so we want to put them in our production system. Sugar stores this layout information in the custom modules directory. So to move the file system changes from development to production, I'm going to use version control tools. I'm using Tortoise SVN for Windows. If your company needs help with version control strategies, we can help you with that. I'm going to go ahead and open up the file system here, give it a right click, and SVN commit the whole folder. Let them know the changes I'm making and click commit. And the changes are now on our SVN server. I'm going to flip over to the production system and do a very similar right click and do an SVN update just for this directory and we can see that the copies have been moved over into this system. Now we know that all the files involved in the layout and the custom field have been brought over. So let's test them. I'm going to log into my production environment now. I'm going to do the same thing, just a quick edit view and we can see immediately that our new fields are not there. There's actually a blank space in the edit view table where we would expect to see the new fields. And what this is that Sugar has decided that it's not going to render these fields because they're not present in the database. Uh, if you were to try to save fields that aren't in the database, you would have SQL errors. So Sugar is intelligent enough to just not 
display any of this information for you because there's no information there. We can bring up a detail view and see the same thing is happening here. We can see that the row has actually been rendered, but it is empty. There's no label, there's no data to show you, there's no field really being represented here at all because it's just not present in the database. So let's see how sugar to prod can help solve this problem. I'm going to go back to the development environment now. I've already set up sugar to prod on both of these systems. It's about a five minutes configuration process. And once it's set up, we're just going to go to the administrative panel, scroll down to the sugar to prod wizard. We can go ahead and click on the verify login button to make sure that we can still log in and access the production system. Then go ahead and click compare custom fields button here and we will see a list of the differences in the custom field settings in both the development and the production system. We scroll down and we can see the ones that are in uh, either system and obviously the ones that are lacking in production are displayed here on top as differences. With each one of these differences we can check it so that we can migrate it. We can check both, either one. Uh, the top selector here will select all of the custom fields listed. And go ahead and click the Migrate Custom Fields button. Then we'll be presented with a report of what was done to the production system. We'll rerun the compare. And we see that there are no more differences in the two systems. Sugar to Prod is listing the production system with all the custom fields that we want to be in there. Let's go ahead and open up the browser again, still on that contact page in our production system. Let's just refresh the page and there we have it. We can see that it is now in the detail view. We can see the custom fields are valid in the system. They're being listed. They're usable. I hope that that gives you a quick idea of how sugar to prod can help assist you with custom fields. But there are other system data kept in the database as well. Sugar to Prod can also help you migrate users and teams from your development center. Now I've set up several users and teams in my system, and let's walk through using Sugar to Prod to help migrate this information. So let's go ahead and see what it takes to manually create our users in production. I've created six in development, so we'll just create the first one here in production by clicking on Admin, click on User Management. Now we need to go up to the Users tab and just click Create New User. We know the username here, we'll type it out. We know the user is going to be Frank Fitzgerald. We'll give that as a username. Frank for the first name, and Fitzgerald for the last. Scroll down and fill in some of Frank's information here. He happens to be the VP of Marketing. If we scroll all the way down, it's important to go ahead and add Frank's email address, which is just frank at mycompany.com. And it looks like it's complete. We can click save and, well, it looks like we forgot to enter his password. Let's go ahead and type in a password for Frank. We'll save the page. If we can see the password was created successfully, the user, Frank Fitzgerald, was created successfully. And that's really not that bad, but imagine having to do it five times in a row, maybe 15 times in a row, maybe 50 times in a row, depending on how many users you need to set up. How can sugar to prod help us? Well, let's move back to our development system and log into the sugar to prod application. Click on the Users tab and compare users. sugar to prod takes just a moment to compare the users between the development and production systems. Scroll down and we can see that we do have five users here existing in development but do not exist in production. We'll just click the Migrate Users button and sugar to prod takes care of all that manual account creation for us. And it's done. We'll rerun this Compare tool to make sure and we can see there's now no differences in the users from one system to the other. Let's flip back to production. And now we're on the list view screen for the users. Let's sort this by username so that we can see who we've brought in. Adam Ark was the first user alphabetically that we imported.
and we can scroll down a bit and we'll see Brent Bradley is listed here as well the username password email address all the information has been imported let's look at the details for the record and we can see he's an active user regular user and we have all of his basic information stored And what if these users have Teams? Teams can also be tedious to set up, and it's definitely good practice to create your user team relationships in development so you can test them out before everything goes out to your users. So again, we need to move our Teams to production from our development system. Again, we can write our SQL, or we can do it manually uh, to the same detriment of moving the user data itself, or we can, of course, use Sugar to Prod. Now, I've opened up my development system again. I'm sure, still on Sugar to Prod, but I want to show you the team that I've created here for all these new users. It's the new users team. It has these five members that we just migrated. Let's go back to Sugar to Prod and click on the Teams tab, and we can compare teams just like we did users. Now that, now that we've done this, we can migrate the teams, or more importantly, migrate the team and user memberships. That does all the assignments. Let's click it. Sugar to Prod is going to take just a moment. And we can see it's finished here. There are no more differences in the systems. Let's move back to production. We'll click on admin and look at our team management. We'll do a quick search for the new users team here. Click on search. It's our first and only result. That is the description I'd had in development. And we can see back in our production system, we do have the five members originally copied, the memberships copied from development, just as we'd expect. Reports are another example of system data that's kept in the database as opposed to the file system. Now, reports can be cumbersome to create, and they can also be cumbersome for your systems and your servers to run. Uh, depending on the length of the report and your system. So I've created this report here in my development system and I'd like to go ahead and move it to production. Uh, I'm running a call center here so I want to know all of the calls that have been logged in the system that lasted over an hour uh, that have taken place this quarter. You can see my reports give me quite a lengthy one here. It's a good deal for my system to create. But to move it over to production I can do this without doing it manually using Sugar to Prod Go ahead and open Sugar to Prod, verify the login, accept the quick warning note, reports tab, and hit compare reports. And Sugar to Prod has listed the one report that I've created here in development that I want to migrate over to production. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a look here. We can click the migrate reports button. Sugar to Prod takes very little time at all. We'll go ahead and close out. Let's switch over to the production server and take a look at it. Quick to the reports tab. You can see it's actually been added into the system here as last viewed. Let's open up the report. And it's taken just a moment to load. But we can see that it is the same Q4 2010 calls over one hour report by user as it loads up. As it loads up, we can scroll down and see the chart matches the one we saw on the development system. And again, it's quite a lengthy report. It would have taken us several minutes and several clicks and create this report manually. Uh, but Sugar to Prod could have done this chart, could have done several charts at once, in fact, very quickly and very easily copying from one system to the other. I hope this video gives you an idea of the value that this module brings to your organization. Sugar to Prod helps you move system data accurately, executing normal system logic as if you were creating elements manually, but is obviously much faster and easier than doing things like this manually. The module is compatible with Sugar Serum 5.5, 6.0, and the newest 6.1 supports MySQL and Microsoft SQL Server databases as your back end. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the Sugar to Prod module, please visit us at www.atcoresystems.com 
or you can click the link in the description of this video. Thank you and have a wonderful day.